taking a look at how the Knicks guarded two empty side dribble handoffs with Grayson Allen down the stretch, both of which Allen scored on, obviously really hurt the cause in terms of the Knicks winning this game. Interesting contrast in how they defended these plays, and I think there's what to learn from it, so let's take a look. Here's the first one. You'll see Compton's going to cut through, so it's going to create an empty side. Now, this is Randall on Giannis and RJ on Allen. Now, RJ chases Allen over this screen. This one, importantly, is coming towards the middle of the floor. I think that's the right move. I think you chase Grayson Allen over because he's a great three-point shooter and less dangerous inside the arc. Generally, you rely on your help. The Knicks like to take away the rim. They play a drop. Now, the issue here, right, is that Brook Lopez makes things tough. That's your center, but he's a stretch five. Mitch can't really be in this action as he's tied to Brook, who had already hit a corner three from that corner. Now, Julius Randle is in the heaviest drop defense, and this has always been insane to me. It's not his strength. He's not very good at it. He doesn't protect the rim very well. I understand you don't want to switch this because that would leave RJ on Giannis, and it's freaking Giannis. But I think Julius can be up a bit on this. I understand he's also nervous about the slip pass with Giannis at the head of Sleem. Okay, he's in heavy drop, but he never really gets in position here, and it's too late by the time Grayson takes off. Brunson was coming through. He's not going to be much of a help anyway because of his size, and Mitch, again, is stuck here. Could he have helped a bit more? Maybe. But ultimately, not a good enough job by Randall and Rock. Here's play number two. Giannis had fouled out of the game. The play is going to be set up as follows. You're going to see Holiday kick to Allen. Brook Lopez is here, which means Mitch is now in the action, and that's very important to me. They're going to run a two-man game between Allen and Lopez. And now you have a choice. RJ chased Allen over the last time and conceded a layup. Maybe he's thinking about that because here you'll see he goes under. Now, shooters are taught. Guy goes under a DHO, you stay and you pull. That's what you do. And so by going under this screen, RJ is encouraging Grayson Allen to pull this shot. He does a really good job contesting it. I mean, that's a tip-top contest up top. But again, to me, Mitch is in the action. If you chase Allen over, Mitch gets to play this pick-and-roll two-on-two. That's his strength. Let him play to his strengths. And don't let Grayson Allen play to his strength, which is to catch and pull. If the pass is made to Brook Lopez, Mitch can recover or RJ can get back and recover. But I, to me, if the play is run for Grayson Allen, the play here is to chase over and make him play two-on-two -two and pick and roll. It's not Julius Randle down there. It's Mitch, right? So I understand RJ maybe was dealing with the prior situation and reacting to it, but this is a different situation with Mitch in the action. Chase him over and play to your strengths, which is two-on-two -two and pick and roll. It's a different situation. 